everybody, and welcome to Inside Gaming. Steak, broccoli, strawberries, bonus Cheetos that have fallen in between the couch cushions. Yes, these are all foods that humans eat on a daily basis. But if you stop and take a look at the Pokemon franchise, when was the last time you saw a cow? Or a broccoli crop? Or that cheese dust covered cat with the glasses? Actually, now that I think about it, that last one does vaguely sound like a Pokemon. But that's beside the point. So with the release of the Pokemon series' first ever DLC, alongside a plethora of brand new Pokemon news, including new Pokemon Snap, we decided to have a little fun and really dive into some Pokemon lore. And as it turns out, people gotta eat. And even though we tried to spend our entire childhoods pretending it wasn't true, it turns out that the people living in the Pokemon universe are eating Pokemon. But probably not all of them. So today we're firing up the Inside Gaming Grill, patent pending, to take a look at some of the delicious little Poke Critters that might just satisfy your munchy cravings. The newest delightfully delicious looking Pokemon is all creamy. It's whipped cream. Living whipped cream. Yeah, it may be a bit weird to dip a spoon into a hunk of something that has big anime eyeballs, but sometimes you just need a dollop of Cool Whip for your pie, you know? But all creamy isn't just a single flavor, oh no! It has a total of 63 different varieties, not including the seven shiny variants as well. Lemon swirl, matcha cream, caramel swirl, rainbow swirl, you want it? They got it. What's more, if you treat your alchemy right, it will actually offer parts of itself to you to eat. Creepy. According to the Pokedex, when alchemy trusts a trainer, it will treat them to berries it's decorated with cream. And when alchemy is content, the cream it secretes from its hands becomes sweeter and richer. So properly care for it and the cream will be all the more sweet and tasty. Again, kind of creepy. Bonus points, when you Gigantamax Alchemy, it turns into a full on wedding cake that shoots sugar coated missiles. Those missiles are all made out of cream and contain a whopping 100,000 kilocalories. So eat in moderation. And what goes best with a scoop of anthropomorphic Cool Whip? A nice, warm pumpkin pie. Since we've never actually seen a pumpkin in the Pokemon world, the closest thing to use would be Pumpkaboo and Gorgeist. Sure, it's said to contain the spirits of those trapped to walk the planet for all eternity, but also, you know, pumpkin pie. Gorgeist in particular can make enough pie to feed an army, as the supersized variety can grow to over 5 feet tall and weigh nearly 90 pounds. Yes, these grass ghost types may try to curse you while you're in the process of attempting to turn them into pumpkin puree, but it's worth it. Trust us. We're not done with the plants just yet, because next up is Cherubi. And as Cherubi grows, so does the berry that's attached to it. The berry contains tons of nutrients that Cherubi can use to grow and eventually evolve. It's also super delicious to other Pokemon, specifically its natural predator, Starly, and also humans, of course. So naturally, if its berry is tasty, Cherubi itself, which sucks in all these yummy nutrients, has to be even more delicious, right? Nothing like a Cherubi berry salad to refresh you in the summer heat. Just ignore the screaming as you chomp down on its still living, juicy flesh. <coughs> that one got a little weird. Let's move on. Squidding pasta is a beloved dish that celebrates the true saltiness of the sea. And when paired with seafood, the taste can't be beat. The Pokemon world's equivalent to this would be Octillery. Octillery's black ink is used in cooking the same way that squid ink is used in our world. But why stop there? After you've gotten all the ink you need, it's time to make use of those tentacles. Sauteing Octillery's tentacles in some Moo Moo Milk made butter and adding it to the Octillery ink pasta will make any would-be poke chef say, Molto bene! All right, keeping with the seafood theme, crabs in the Pokemon world are unique in that their shells are too tough to crack. Or in some cases, their claws just aren't particularly tasty. Crab Rawler, however, is the exception. While Crab Rawler's claws don't have an abundance of meat in them, they make up for that in the sheer flavor and nutrients they hold inside. Because these little guys are fighting type, it's no surprise that they often fight over territory in the Alolan region. That's actually a huge benefit for humans because with the excessive fighting comes dismembered pincers. And that means it's easy to harvest tons of these and have a big ol' Crab Rawler boil! Yeah! 
All right, let's finish off the seafood section with something a little different. During the Song Dynasty in China, lasting from 960 AD until 1279 AD, a new dish was popularized, shark fin soup. The flavors of these real world soups actually come from the broth. The fins are just used for their unique consistency. It's also believed that the fins have positive effects on skin, energy, and of course, sexual activity. And just like those real world sharks, Sharpedo suffer a similar fate. They're just too good to resist. Sharpedo's dorsal fin is seen as a king among delicacies, causing the shark-like Pokemon to become endangered due to constant overfishing. Okay, so you probably saw this one coming, but do you ever wonder why Farfetch'd is only ever attained in in-game trades, special events, or under unique circumstances except for in the Gala region? Maybe because it's a delicacy. And the only thing that heightens the experience of eating a perfectly roasted Farfetch'd with its tender meat silky fat, crispy skin is a leek to go alongside it. Which is all kinds of perfect. Since the beginning of the Pokemon series, Farfetch'd has only been known for two things, being fairly useless stat-wise and being doofy enough to carry around a leek with it. It truly is a one-stop shopping trip for a delicious duck dinner. Okay, while Farfetch'd brings its own side dish with it, the Tepig and Torchig evolutionary lines go the extra mile and bring enough heat to cook themselves. You don't even need to fry up these Pokemon's bacon or nuggets to enjoy them. They've already got you covered. Torchic starts out small and eventually evolves into a human-like kung fu kicking chicken. But the ideal time to eat one would be at the combuskin stage. Blaziken becomes too muscular, but Combuskin keeps just the right amount of fat on it. And at a height of nearly three feet tall and an average weight of 43 pounds, it's a hefty bird, making it ideal for some Kentucky Fried Combuskin. Tepig, on the other hand, is good to eat anytime, but the more it evolves, the bigger it gets, and the more bacon you get. So in this case, Embor is your best bet if you're the type who's always disappointed at the measly two pieces of bacon that Denny's gives you when you order a Grand Slam. All right, since we already dealt with chicken and pork, it's only fair to hit the trifecta. Burgers, ribs, steak, milk too, I guess? But mostly steak. We're lumping the next three together because they're all delicious for the same reason. But the big difference between them is the quality of the meat and how it's raised. First up is Tauros. They're wild and aggressive, so their meat to fat ratio isn't necessarily ideal, but it can get the job done. Because of this, they're the lowest quality beef you'd find in the Pokemon world, but it's still good enough for your extended family at a barbecue that you didn't invite them to, or you know, to make hot dogs and burgers out of. Bufalant is the in-between. It's got a nice gamey taste, and its meat to fat ratio is much better than Tauros, even despite it having a notoriously bad attitude as well. In this case, Bufalon would be your go-to meat for a nice steak dinner, within a budget. Finally, we're at Miltank, which are usually farm-raised, produce milk, and are treated exceptionally well by those who raise them. Use up the Miltank until the milk they produce is no longer up to standards, and then off to the chop house with them. The closest real-world equivalent to a Miltank's meat would probably be Kobe beef which makes Whitney's mill tank all the much more tasty of a meal after its inevitable defeat. And finally, the Pokemon world's delicacy to end all delicacies, Slowpoke. Its tastiness was talked about as early as gold and silver with members of Team Rocket cutting off the creature's tails and selling them to be eaten. But Slowpoke isn't only delicious, it's a renewable food source as well. So that's a win-win for everybody. There are two major ways to prepare a slowpoke tail for consumption. The first involves the tail simply being sucked or chewed on. This allows for the raw flavor of the slowpoke to be enjoyed throughout the day as a treat. It's mainly enjoyed by children. The other is where slowpoke truly shines. A dried slowpoke tail can be simmered and enjoyed in stews, soups, and a variety of other dishes. These meals are traditional to the Alolan region and are said to be otherworldly in both flavor and consistency. But that's not all. Slowpoke tails can be turned into a variety of natural medicines, remedies, and seasonings to cure whatever ails you. Thanks, Slowpoke. The best part, however, is that aforementioned renewable food source. Slowpoke's tails never actually run out. Much like various reptiles, when a slowpoke's tail is either cut off or falls off, another immediately begins growing in its place. So hey, you know, renewable food source, everybody. Personally, I don't think I could ever eat a Pokemon. Maybe it's just me, but spending all that time growing a bond with my Squirtle, having it evolve into Blastoise, raising its IVs and EVs, building a bond together, only to turn it into turtle soup seems a bit heartless. And just a wee bit messed up, if you ask me. 
But of course, this is just a brief look into the weird and delicious world of Pokemon. We could go on for hours and hours about the horrifying Pokedex entries, the unique bonds Pokemon hold with their trainers and the world, and even more about the actual eating of Pokemon. Needless to say, the world of Pokemon is weird and wonderful, and we hope you enjoyed this small taste of what it has to offer. And thanks for watching Inside Gaming. So everybody cozy up and let's talk about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Rescue Team DX. It's super effective. The remake with the longest name ever. I think I'm gonna start putting random letters at the end of my name. Maybe like a re X T X four. Definitive uh, edition. Yep. So yes, this long named game, Pyramid. Dirty for short releases.